Hey, it's Howard Neller. Welcome back to another episode of The Listening Chair. We got a good one for you today, folks. We have our final part two video of our review of Synergistic Research's Galileo PowerCell SX. It's a $28,000 unit. In part one, we took a look at the features. Here in part two, we're going to look at the performance and examine whether any power conditioner could be worth $28,000. Okay, to start things off, let me go over something that I didn't know when I made part one of the video. I knew that the, um, the Galileo Paracel SX, that Synergistic Research does not make a lot of them, but what I found out was they make between 20 and 50 a year, and here's the thing. They only will sell these power cells to good Synergistic customers. People who have full loom of Synergistic products in their system. So it's kind of akin to like a Ferrari type setup where if you want to buy a certain Ferrari, Ferrari will not sell you that car unless they know you're a good customer, they know you're going to take care of the unit, they know you're not going to flip it for a quick profit. So they're not just going to sell it to anybody who comes in even with a half million dollars. Knowing that, the average person who uses the power cell in their system is going to have other synergistic products that they're using it with, like I do. So I have the synergistic research, you know, Galileo um, ground block. I also have you know, Synergistic Footers. It's really a system that they sell. I guess the name Synergistic Research makes sense in that, in that respect. Typically when I review a product, I would isolate that product out from any other product. I would try to eliminate as many, you know, external influences as possible to isolate the performance of that component. Here, um, it's a little different in that this thing is made to be used in a system of Synergistic products. So I'm gonna talk about this power cell in a synergistic system. Um, right now I'm going to show you um, how the power cell is looking in my system. I'm going to make a video soon just going into depth about the whole entire system which I think is warranted here but just quickly here for, for today's purpose you can see that I have esoteric components both analog and digital. I have the esoteric grandioso digital stack. I have YG acoustic speakers with JL audio subwoofers and the external uh, JL full range CR1 crossover. I have the power cell over here and I have pretty much everything hooked into it and that is including uh, my esoteric S1 stereo amplifier. I also have you know the associated Synergistic Research gear that we spoke about. Well I have symposium racks, I, I didn't symposium acoustic racks, I didn't note that and above that I have uh, Synergistic Research uh, tranquility based carbon platforms, uh, active platforms, and I'm using the Synergistic Research MIG SX footers under there. Here I have the, the Synergistic Research Galileo ground block. You can change the bias, which is supposed to change the type of sound. So that is uh, the, the purple bias, and that's the red bias there. And, and, and it works with the ground block. The ground block also has different biases on it. And you take a look at it here. I have you can see it's the, the kind of the purple light, so it's the purple setting. Quick, you can see the New York City view out there, so that's pretty cool. But I'm back to the power cell. I'm, I'm using um, the SRX power cord that comes with the unit, it's a $10,000 cord if sold separately. I have the power cell, you can see it's lit up inside, you can see it's lit up with the red bias light. To change the bias, I just kind of hit that one button and it, it's supposed to change the sound from a focus to a more kind of grander, more, more larger sound stage, uh, less intimate. So that's one setting and that's the other. And then there's setting for the lights, which you can have no lights or it's hard to see now, but you can see that they're changing. Um, it's like a Macintosh blue and like a light blue, a different kind of blue, and there's a red. I think they call Dante red. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. As far as the power cord, the SRX power cord, like I said, the SRX power cord has two tuning bullets. That one's gold and one's silver, which you can use to change the sound, the sound that the cord causes the system to make. So I have another uh, SRX power cord out. 
And you can see here, it's a beautiful cord, but you can see here that it comes with the bullets. Now, there's two bullets that go in the cord. One is the active bullet, which powers, it's an active cord, which powers the power cord, and which makes it active. That is this, so that goes on there no matter what, and that causes a blue light to light up. And then there are the two tuning bullets. One's a silver bullet, which is supposed to be kind of a faster sound and a leaner sound and faster. And one's a silver, a gold bullet rather, which is supposed to have um, more harmonic bloom and be perhaps a little bit slower, but fuller and um, a, a little warmer. So, you know, you just take either one. In this case, I'm using the silver bullet. You'll mostly want to use the silver bullet, I would think, but there are occasions when you might want a gold. Mostly not. And then also there's a uh, connection here. You can see it um, right there. F that's right over here for um, to connect the ground wire that goes into the, also for a ground wire. It comes with a separate uh, wire. So you have one wire that goes from the power cell into the wall and then one that goes from this SRX power cord also into the wall. So this is the conclusion of the video where the rubber meets the road and um, you know in one word uh, if I had to you know having the Galileo power cell in my system was really transformative. Uh, this is actually the second conclusion that I filmed. The first one I cited a lot of music and gave examples and it just became too long and I just don't want to get lost in the detail here because it's really the, the big picture that matters. But, um, you know, the performance of the Galileo Paracel did not not just check the audiophile boxes. Yes, the soundstage was larger. Yes, there was, it was deeper. Yes, it was quieter, much quieter. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But, um, and, and the, you know, other audiophile boxes, like the bass was better. You know, the refinement, the difference in refinement, the difference in... I would call it like in color saturation, or harmonic color saturation. With the Galileo Power Cell, it's much more vibrant, much more alive, um, just much more present. It really was the difference between like, you know, sitting down and, and saying, wow, that's really good sound, to sitting down and saying, this is something that I've never heard before, <laughs> as far as this is just on a, on a different level. Aside from the refinement and the elegance, um, you know, there were, the, I mean, the, the flow was better, too, I, I would just mention, that voices just kind of effortlessly came out, come out of the speakers with the power, with the Yellow Power Cell in there. Um, just, it just, it was so natural sounding and so um, unforced. And again, like, you felt like there was, you know, no, no headroom, no potential problems of headroom whatsoever. Uh, most people, I don't think, have ever heard anything like this. And I think the, the quietness was, and I, maybe this was part of the flow, but the quietness, the background noise, I mean, you just, you, how quiet can it be? My system is so quiet. People have come over here. I'm going to have a bunch of listening sessions. We're going we're gonna, to um, film them, and I've been doing that for a little while now. And everyone says, wow, it's so quiet, it's so quiet. And yet with the Galileo Paracel, it was even more quiet. And there was more detail. Things sounded more natural, the tonality. I mean, hand claps and bells and violas and all type of sounds just sounded so much more natural, so much more tonally correct. There was more, the detail was better, not just in, you know, the micro detail, but in the, the, the tonal detail of what things sounded like and how they should sound. So really, um, an unbelievable difference. You know, speaking about peakiness, the highs were just so much cleaner and, and so much less grating. And everything improved throughout the spectrum and the voices, that, you know, in the mid-range, uh, the voices were just so much more, like again, I'm using this word, but it's really, it's just, it's just, it's the word to use here, so much more refined, so much more elegant also. And it just really was, it would set back, I would think, even hardened audiophiles. So that's my listening impression. Um, I'm kind of glad that, um, I, you know, this thing was so transformative because for $28,000, it, it really has to be. And it, it did deliver. Everybody who's interested in audio should hear it. If you like what you're seeing on our videos, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Leave a comment if, you, if, you, if you'd like. Tell us what you're thinking. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll talk to you soon.